Freeze. Uh, while on a route, we were given information of a second shooting that was just several blocks away. Police say the suspect then shot a man at 11th and Quindaro and tried to steal his car. That victim is expected to be okay. He got away and called police from a couple blocks away. Police found the suspect walking back near 11th and Quindaro. That's when the suspect opened fire on officers. Luckily, our officer was not struck. The suspect was not struck either, but taken into custody. David Grigsby owns a barber shop near the scene. He says the area has actually improved in recent years. In the last five years, it's been a big change. I mean, it's quiet. Uh, see a lot of new people coming in. He says crime has gone down. A lot less, but there's still a lot of stuff going on behind these back streets and stuff. But this hits close to home. Today, I do know the family, and uh, I'm going to pray for their family. Emily Hallway, KMBC 9 News. Police say the suspect has minor injuries. We're still waiting to learn the name of that suspect and what charges that person will face. A peculiar Missouri police officer is recovering in a hospital after being hit during a chase. Police were responding to a shoplifting case at a local Sutherlands. An officer spotted a man in a white SUV and tried to pull him over. That's when the man's car hit the patrol car. The driver then ditched the car and ran off, crossing all lanes of I-49. Police say another driver on the highway saw him running. He stopped to help chase that suspect, who finally stopped and was arrested, and charges are pending. A top Republican in the Kansas Senate is disputing attempts to tie Medicaid expansion to abortion. Senate Majority Leader Jim Denning of Overland Park says some Republican colleagues argued by expanding Medicaid, the state would be paying for elective abortions. Denning says there is no link, adding pregnant women would not be covered under the expanded part of the program, but by the state's traditional Medicaid health coverage for people in need. We have a health alert tonight. Missouri and Kansas are still seeing a high number of flu cases. This is the latest map from the CDC. Nearly every state is dealing with widespread flu activity, including Kansas and Missouri. Doctors in Missouri have seen more than 44,000 flu cases this season. That's more than double this time last year. Doctors in Johnson County, Kansas have seen more than 5,000 cases of the flu. That is the highest number in six years at this point in the season. Kansas City, Missouri's proposed city budget is expected to eliminate $800,000 in art spending. KMBC 9's Bianca Beltran reports one of the programs facing cuts is one that uses art to prevent violence. In the beginning of the summer, um, the goal was to to kind of pick something that connects you to this city and, and kind of how you feel about it. Many of the youth come to Arts Tech from family court after trouble with the law or dropping out of school. Outreach specialist Taylor Brown says art allows them to open up. You do see a mixture of kind of sad stories and just kind of, um, you know, a reflection of what they're going through. But then you can also see the hope that they create for themselves through the different experiences that they have. The center teaches many skills. Oh, this is our sewing studio here. They really like what they do here. And Executive Director David Sullivan says after participating in the Teens in Transition program, youth are more likely to stay in school and out of trouble. The police department went back five years of kids going through the program and found out that two-thirds of them have never been involved in uh, law enforcement since. Despite these positive outcomes, the program faces a $90,000 funding cut in the city's proposed budget. Sullivan says when faced with adversity, one must carry on. We're telling the kids, you got to keep persevering. You got to keep fighting for what's good. Well, they're good, and we'll keep fighting for them. And it's just a super awesome experience for everybody. In Kansas City, Missouri, Bianca Beltran, KMBC 9 News. The mayor says the proposed cuts are needed to offset unexpected costs of the new Lowe's Convention Hotel downtown. First alert traffic expects some slowdowns this weekend south of Worlds of Fun. Starting tonight at 11 o'clock, MoDOT will close a couple lanes of 210 Highway near 435. The ramps from 210 to southbound 435 will be shut down for concrete pier work. That should be done by Monday morning. More changes are coming to KCI. A new lot is opening Monday. It will be for passengers being dropped off or picked up at the airport. It consolidates the cell phone, taxi, limo, and shuttle lots into one. KCI says the new location will be easier to find and a shorter drive to the terminals. The changes are part of work on a new single terminal airport. The crew of the USS Kansas City now knows when their ship will be put into active service. The combat ship will go into commission in the South China Sea June 20th. The date was announced today at the National World War I Museum. Mayor Lucas and Kansas City Congressman Emanuel Cleaver were among those on hand for the announcement. The LCS was going after regionally important cities that, that mean a lot to the strength of the country and contribute in their own ways, whether we're talking about Super Bowl victories or good barbecue or bringing strong men and women out to the Navy to ensure that we can man the ships properly. 
and go over the horizon and do whatever America needs us to do. The USS Kansas City is the second ship to be named for Kansas City. The ship was christened and launched in 2018. When you look at the North American continent, you see colder air spilling down from Canada. You get a little nervous. We just had some Arctic air and it's finally leaving. What we can expect at least into the weekend and early next week is not quite so cold as the Arctic air kind of bypasses toward the Great Lakes region. We'll put specific numbers to that in the first alert nine day trend coming up. Kansas City is feeling the love. The emotions are always so high because, like I said, you feel the love. From we weddings. Reseal this union with, with a kiss. To Valentine Grams. Why, oh, why can't I? KMBC 9 is showcasing the sweet moments on this romantic day. That's next on KMBC 9 News at 6. You're watching KNBC 9 News. Happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow. Why, oh, why can't I? Why can't I? So sweet. The Heart of America Barbershop Chorus stopped by the Community Blood Center this morning for a special performance. The organization shared this video of the group serenading HR recruiter Peggy. Happy Valentine's Day to all those lifesavers. And it was a special Valentine's Day at Research Medical Center. This is Janice. Oh my goodness. Oh, I think about you and John. Volunteers and staff hand delivered what they called love bags filled with toiletries and inspirational items. It is the sixth year the hospital has done this, working with the nonprofit Giving Hope and Help, meant to brighten the lives of patients at a time when they need it the most. Everything is donated, and if you would like to help, I have a link on my KNBC Facebook page. And couples are locking their love at the old Red Bridge in Minor Park for Valentine's Day. Casey Water says once you place your love lock on the bridge, toss your key into a drop box, not in the Blue River. Love locks started in 2013 when about 100 locks were placed on the bridge. There are more than 5,000 locks there now. And love is in the air on the plaza. For two decades, Unity Temple has invited couples to marry or renew their vows on Valentine's Day for free. And dozens of couples did just that. With this intention, I ask you, Rob, 
Do you commit your, recommit yourself to be dedicated partner? For Rob and Connie Dotson, this Valentine's Day is a time of recommitment. After 23 years of marriage, they still believe in the romance of this day. In fact, this isn't their first time. This is third time around. I know it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we renewed our vows seven years ago and we're doing it again today. And this was a great way to kick off the weekend. We're renewing our vows for the third time. Third time's a charm. Unity Temple started the Valentine tradition 20 years ago. Over the years, it's added a wedding planner, music, and bouquets. It's free. You just provide the license and the love. You feel the love. You can feel it, and it's just amazing. It really is. You get teary-eyed. You There's laughter. There's just a little bit of everything. Elizabeth and Dane Pearson got quite a reaction when they entered the chapel. Only one of them knew anything about this. I scheduled our vow renewal ceremony, and he had no idea until he walked in this morning. None at all. None at all. Well, I'm pretty good at going along with uh, some of Elizabeth's crazy ideas, and uh, this is definitely one of them, but it's been a lot of fun. 30 couples registered for the celebration of love. Unity Temple considers it a gift to local lovebirds. Ladies and gentlemen, they have done it again. They are now recommitted as husband and wife.